Good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar covering community-wide EV vision. Firstly, if you could please rename yourself to include the community you are representing, that would be awesome. And in the chat, please answer the question, does your community have an EV vision? So we'll go ahead and give everyone a minute or two to put their answer in the chat. Mostly seeing no's here, but that is okay, and that is why we're having this webinar today. We have one not exactly and a sort of, so hopefully the things we cover will be able to help you finally get that to a yes. Awesome. So, well, it looks like it's mostly no's or somewhat. So it looks like today will be really helpful and, and informative for getting to do that. So to quickly cover today's agenda, first, we're going to have a presentation on community EV vision by Marissa Bayer in, of the Partners in Energy program. After that, we'll move on to a short Q&A, but we do have a hard stop at 9.30. So for, for Marissa's time, so if there are any lingering questions, you can always reach out to us and we can follow up afterwards. After that, we'll move on to an EV visions exercise with everyone, then finally discuss some next steps. Now with that, we'll go on to the presentation and I'll pass it on to Marissa. Hey, thank you. Hi, good morning, everyone. Again, my name is Marissa Baer. I am a facilitator with the Partners of Energy program, um, and I'm here today to talk to you about creating a community EV vision. Um, I have a few slides to go through with you here. Um, and again, as Alejandro mentioned, I'm available to answer questions. Unfortunately, I just have a hard stop at 930, but um, I know I'm familiar with a lot of folks' names and faces that I've seen this morning. So you probably have my contact information. If not, we can get that over to you. So first, just what are we hoping to cover today? Um, so just what is an EV vision? What does that mean? Um, how you can create a vision for your community as you think about electric vehicles, as you think about charging infrastructure, and then how do you tie your vision to your goals and to the strategies that you wanna implement to make sure you are, are working towards that and, it's, and you're achieving what you've come together and said you wanna accomplish. First, at just a high level for those who aren't familiar, so what is Partners in Energy? So I'm here on behalf of the Partners in Energy program, which is a program from Excel Energy that works with communities to create and implement energy plans and energy visions. Um, it's a great opportunity for communities to engage stakeholders, create goals, strategies, and develop a work plan to be successful. The way that we work with communities, uh, what folks are most familiar with is energy action planning. So working to create that energy action plan and support implementation of that plan. Uh, we also work with communities to create electric vehicle action plans. We complete data analysis and mapping, um, and then also host webinars and events to connect the communities that we work with. Um, if you don't know a lot about the program, you can see the website on the slides in front of you if you want to learn more. So getting into the meat of it, what is an EV vision? So this is a vision and so it's gonna serve as your North Star during planning and during implementation. It should inform your goal setting and it should help focus your efforts as you think about strategy implementation. EV vision should be unique to your community and really reflect your unique voice, your community needs. And a really great way just to kind of summarize it is that your EV vision should be an expression of your community's shared intention. What are you hoping to do? Another way to think about this is an EV vision is what you want to do, why you want to do it, and how you want to do it. 
And so being able to answer those questions of what, why, and how, that's really what the vision is intended to do is kind of, as I mentioned, focusing and centering your efforts as you think about electric vehicles, as you think about charging infrastructure in your community. Examples of community electric vehicle visions. So the three examples, I won't read all of them on the screen, but they come from um, two communities in Colorado, North Glen, Colorado, and Boulder County, Colorado, um, who went through Partners in Energy to create electric vehicle action plans and a regional transportation plan. And then Eau Claire, Wisconsin, also went through the Partners in Energy process to create an electric vehicle roadmap. So we worked with them to help put together these visions. And what you can see is they're all a little bit different, uh, but ultimately they are answering those questions of what they want to do why they want to be doing it and how they're going to be doing it. And so really just something to be thinking about. And you can look to inspiration from other communities. But as I mentioned, you really want that vision to be unique to what you're hoping to accomplish. It should represent what your community is hoping to do. When we follow up with these slides, um, all of these community names are hyperlinked. So you can actually look at that community's plan, read a little bit more about their vision um, if you are interested. So as you think about setting, creating this EV vision, who should help you create your EV vision? So um, just based on some of the names I see on the screen, you are likely representing your cities or your community's sustainability department. But you may want other people involved in this conversation. Um, I think it's really great and one of our best practice recommendations is to have other voices and representation in the conversation. Um, and so these are some recommended um, and kind of best practice folks who are involved if you are thinking about municipal or an enterprise, uh, a vision and strategies and goals, the at the top of your screen, that top row, those are really important people to have at the table as you think about an enterprise focused EV vision. So your fleet managers, transportation and engineering departments, public works, planning, uh, but beyond that, even if you're focus on just fleet or even community-wide uh, municipal and county leadership. So that may be a city council representative, county board, um, your commission members. If you have a commission or a task force to bring that more public community focus, um, residents and businesses, and then transit providers uh, in your community, depending how uh, transit is provided in your community, uh, working with those organizations because they, they may have input as you think about what the future of electric vehicles and charging infrastructure would look like in your community. So as you think about an EV vision and goals, um, what it, as we mentioned, an electric vehicle vision is what you're going to do. And an EV goal, as you think about setting a goal, um, is how you know you're successful. And visioning and goal setting is very closely related. Um, often we see very similar language in a vision and in a goal. Um, a good example is that North Glen, Colorado, in their vision, they talk about reducing greenhouse gas emissions. And then that's tied into their strategies and tied into the goals that they've set. So they're all very related. And so first, as you create that EV vision, that is hopefully eventually going to inform the goal that you're creating. And just as you think about creating that EV goal, we uh, recommend through Partners in Energy, and I'm sure any planning process or, or other organization you've worked with, use this acronym SMART. You want to set a SMART goal. Um, and what that means is it's specific of who, what, where. It's measurable that you have data available to track progress, um, that it's achievable, that today required technology is available. It is something that you can be working towards. Um, that it's realistic and aligning with your strategies, and that there's a time frame to complete this. Um, this is something that we, that, as I mentioned, you may be very familiar with. We really emphasize through the Partners in Energy program, and it's closely tied to that as you set that EV goal. So a few earlier slides, I showed the communities that we've worked with a few examples of creating an EV vision. What this slide is now showing how those goals have related. So from North Glen, Colorado, they noted transitioning to electric transportation future. They have specific number of vehicles. Um, they're noting that they wanted to align with the state of Colorado EV plan over in Eau Claire, Wisconsin. Um, they were looking at vehicle miles travel, but had some very specific goals related to fleet, related to charging, and then also just EV registrations. And then in Boulder, Colorado, um, in addition, they also were looking at transitioning vehicle registration to electric vehicles or and then also by 2030, looking to combine charging networks, looking at level two and DC fast charging. So that's just kind of an example of how these, these items relate together. And then as you think about an EV goal and an EV vision, these three communities, how does it fit into their plans? Um, and so through this process, you may be creating a plan, you may be doing something standalone, it may be a focus area in a plan that you've created, 
maybe it's just a kind of a strategy or a focus that you're working towards. So as you, these communities created their EV visions, created their EV goals in Northville and Colorado, they created a broader electric vehicle action plan. And that work also supports an energy action plan that they created where electric vehicles were a focus. In Eau Claire, Wisconsin, they created an electric vehicle roadmap. And so key strategies to help them achieve their goal and what that did is support their larger renewable energy action plan that set a goal towards carbon neutrality by 2050. And then in Boulder, Colorado, the vision and goal created for their regional transportation electrification plan was included there, but then also is guiding local community EV planning as well. And so counties obviously at a little bit higher level than maybe some of you at that municipal, but they're working and creating that vision to communicate down um, and hopefully guide some local planning that's happening in their community. And so kind of just to, to pull it all together, your EV vision and your EV goal is going to lead to those EV smart strategies and actions that through this process, through this great cohort model that you are a part of, we'll be creating, we'll be looking at uh, helping implement. And so as you think about that EV vision and goal, it's much higher level. It's is again, kind of what you want to do, how you want to do it, how you know you'll be successful, but it is and should be really closely related to those EV smart actions that you'll be, be working on and identifying. So as you move on from today as you think about creating your electric vehicle vision, as you think about new EVs, new charging infrastructure, really know that those are closely related. Um, and so just kind of start thinking about that higher level and, and how they might relate. Those are the slides that I have for you this morning to kind of walk through EV visions, what we've seen through the partners and energy process. Um, I'll stop sharing my screen and I'm happy to answer any questions um, that folks might have um, about EV visions or EV goals. Marissa, I had a question as you were going through the presentation. Um, how long might you expect like a process of visioning to take a community? Depending on who you have involved. Um, and so I would say it can range from a week or two, or I've worked with communities where the visioning process was multiple months long, but the longer the process we typically see is when there's a lot of different people involved and the, the community lead or the staff lead is really looking for that broader input. Um, and so as you may be thinking about a very kind of focused smaller group could take a week or two just to brainstorm to ideate, excuse me, to kind of wordsmith and finalize that vision. But if you're getting a lot more input, you're going out to a broader stakeholder group or community group to give input that might just take a little bit longer. I have a question. Um, I was wondering if these like steps and actions are like scalable to like all different sizes of communities or if like smaller, more rural communities should focus like on a specific piece of this or something. And I missed the, the first part of your question. I think you broke up a little bit. And so just to make sure I understood, you're kind of trying to understand from a larger community to maybe a more rural, small community, is there a way to right size, visioning, goal setting? Yep. Okay. Um, and so to, to answer that question, Griffin, um, we've seen that as communities, since this is driven and developed by the community. Uh, we just naturally find it becomes right size, but something to think about as you, especially around goal setting and, and strategy and action development and decisions, definitely think about resources that are available to you. Um, obviously communities with larger populations, larger budgets, sometimes have a little bit broader, more ambitious strategy list because they have that staff capacity, they might have that budget cast capacity where more rural, smaller communities don't quite have the same types of resources. So that's something to think about really around the strategy and action setting. And then when you think about goals too, just that um, idea for the SMART acronym, achievable, is it something that you feel like the, the city could accomplish? You can still be ambitious, but is it something that is achievable and realistic for your community based on the resources that you know you have access to? Uh, 
I, I have a question. I'm wondering, is there like any rhyme or reason to how, I guess, broad or specific you make your goal? Do you want to just say, we're going to, you know, be leaders in charging and EV infrastructure, or can you get more specific? What's your uh, take on that? Usually visions are that kind of broader um, kind of swath across of, you know, wanting to be a leader. Um, I think where it becomes specific is being a leader in what? Um, what what are you really shooting for? What are you focusing on? If your uh, vision just says we want to be a leader in um, electric vehicle deployment and charging, you know, that's pretty high level. That's something you can be working towards, but you could get a little bit more specific there um, around, you know, is it at a community scale? Is it for residents? Is it for businesses who might be benefiting? Um, and so as you think about creating that vision, um, definitely think about who might be impacted. Another way to to think about creating your EV vision too is look at other visions that your community has created through sustainability planning, comprehensive planning, strategic planning. Are there specific values that your city, county, municipality has that should be captured in some way in your electric vehicle vision? Um, and then for the goals, we definitely recommend being specific um, so you can measure and track your progress towards the goal that you've set. I have a question. <clears throat> we are, so we're going through partners in energy, energy action plan process right now. Um, and then it kind of seems like this is getting set up as a sort of a separate thing. Is this something that partners in energy will come in and say, hey, we want to do a separate like EV action plan? Or in the case of our action plan, EVs, EV readiness is really taking front and center, I guess, as, as part of a broader discussion about electrification more broadly. Um, and so I, I'm just wondering, like, can we kind of roll it into that process and say, you know what, let's let's actually set a separate vision while we're at this for um, specifically for EVs, um, or can we kind of lump that in with our more our our broader energy thing? Because you know, transportation, EVs, it, it's I mean, it's all connected, so it. Yeah, absolutely. And that's a, a great question, Matthias. So uh, we've seen it both ways. We've seen communities go through an energy action planning process. You know, they wanna focus on efficiency, renewable energy, and they want electric vehicles to be a, a focus area of that plan. It's not the sole focus, it's part of kind of what you said, that broader energy action, building electrification and transportation electrification. And so in that case, we see communities um, include electric vehicles or charging as part of their just broader vision, or they maybe create a subset component of that and then specific targets or metrics that they would be tracking towards that specific electric vehicle focus area. But we have also seen communities with an energy action plan and also with a separate electric vehicle action plan. And, and the big difference there is that their energy action plan does not talk about electric vehicles. It's not referencing it as very focused on efficiency, renewable energy, building, grid building consumption. And then that electric vehicle action plan is where they have all of the, the items related to EVs and charging infrastructure. So it can be done both ways. And, and it's really up to the community on what they think is best and kind of how they want to go through this process and how they kind of want to capture and dive into energy efficiency, renewable energy, and then electric vehicle as part of that. Any other questions from folks? If you have a question that you want to throw in the chat, feel free to do that as well. And if you think of something later, like Alejandra mentioned, um, we'll either answer it ourselves internally if it's something that we can answer or uh, pass the question on to Marissa to get that answer for you as well. And Marissa, could, I know you had it in the your slides, but would you maybe throw your email into the chat also if people want to yes. contact you directly? Yeah, um, I will put that in the chat message.
Well, we want to thank Marissa so much for coming today. Uh, that was an awesome overview of all things visioning and goal setting. Um, so really thankful for your presentation this morning. Um, and we'll let you we'll let you get going so you're, you don't miss your next item. Great, um, thank really you, Lindsay. Appreciate you. Yeah, thanks everyone for having me and, and thanks Lindsay, Rebecca, Alejandro, and Diana um, for reaching out to me and um, I can put my email in the chat if you have any questions um, and hope folks have a good rest of their Wednesday. I hope you're able to enjoy the sun today if you're uh, in the cities. All right, take care. All right, well. We move on to our next item in this webinar. Um, as, as we've mentioned, if you think of something, um, please write it down. We'll get the question to Marissa or we'll uh, tackle it on our, on our own. But uh, just know that you have time to still think if you have questions. Up next, we will be uh, working on a group breakout session where we're going to just kind of take uh, what Marissa just talked about and put it into action, just having a little brainstorming uh, with our peers uh, here in the cohort. We'll be breaking up into um, four different groups and there's each a specific ED topic where you can uh, where you can brainstorm a vision, start writing it down just to kind of get a feel of what that process is. Um, you can either pick a fictional city that nobody knows, or you could focus on a specific city. We'll leave that up to your group members. Um, and uh, we will be dropping a link into the chat for uh, the document where we will be working on this. Uh, it is a Google Slides presentation. And uh, if everybody can go click on that before we break you off into groups, just to make sure that you get there, um, then you will work with your group members. There's instructions on the first slide. And uh, if you have any questions during the process, uh, feel free to chat to uh, anyone at GPI and we'll be able to uh, help you with that. Um, is there any questions right, right away before we get broken up? All right, uh, Rebecca, if you can place everybody into the groups. Uh, we have four topics, fleet electrification, uh, public charging, EV education, and EV regulations. So we're just looking for like a sentence or two of a vision for a community on, on what that might look like. There's a section for notes and a section for the vision. I will come back and we'll reflect afterwards. Participating in the the EV visioning process, we hope that uh, you find that it is something that is doable for your community. And I just want to take a moment to um, to have groups share out maybe their vision, if you would like, or um, to discuss what you thought about the process, uh, if you have any comments and if you think that this is something that your community can do. So I'll just open it up to the group, whatever um, whatever strikes you to share. I would also encourage groups to go back. We did a Google slide all on the same slide. So take a look at what other groups developed as well. I can go first from group one. We were working on a fleet electrification vision. Um, some of the things that we like thought were of note were, you know, how to balance replacement schedules with a lot of EVs have like a lead time. So you have to place an order and then it's like a year until you get it, or it might be a couple weeks. It just depends. So how to balance replacement schedules, lead times, and then the capabilities of current EVs on the market. Um, another thing we said was like, you can prioritize fleet you. you fleet vehicles that have a high level of util utilization. So if it's a vehicle that's being driven every single day and it's being driven specifically like within the city, like it's not like leaving the city that much, that's like a high priority vehicle. Um, and then also like thinking about vehicle replacement needs being equivalent to like 
making sure your replacement can handle all of the same workloads that your internal combustion would have. So for us in rural Minnesota, our trucks, our like work trucks have to be able to be on uneven dirt roads that sometimes are really muddy and you can get stuck easily. Um, and so you have to have a truck to go on those roads. And the only EV truck currently is like a $70,000 like luxury vehicle pretty much. So thinking about balancing all of that, um, we kind of split our vision up into two pieces, high level vision that the city will reduce its greenhouse gas emissions and vehicle operation maintenance costs by replacing internal combustion vehicles shared by city employees with electric vehicles. And then the specific kind of zoomed in goal with that is that by 2030, the city will electrify 30% of its gas powered municipal fleet with equivalent EVs. So that's going back to that being capability wise equivalent. Um, but yeah. Thank you, Griffin. It seems like your group had a very fruitful discussion. Maybe I'll just go down the line. Uh, is there anyone from group two that wants to briefly touch on what you discussed? I'll go. Um, so we had public charging vision. And so one of the, we were talking about how to make sure that um, we're putting uh, chargers in places where, you know, people are, are already stopping. So making sure they're in places like retail areas, um, not some place that they're just going to have to sit around and wait for it to charge, but they can go inside and do some shopping and just making sure that it's an easy part of their daily life. Um, also making sure there are facilities nearby like restrooms, um, trying to be mindful of the price for users, ease of use, that sort of thing. So our vision we came up with was an equitable network of accessible chargers serves the community as an economic asset while also meeting diverse transportation needs. So kind of making this, this as um, kind of a means to economic development as well. That's great. I like that. And I, I really like looking at your vision. I like how you noted that um, that it's going to be an equitable network. So then as you're creating those goals to go along with it, that that's in the forefront. And um, I think Marissa mentioned this, that it's your vision should really reflect your community and what's important to your community. And so, um, you know, if economic development is a big piece of that, uh, I love how that was woven in. And I'll call in group three as well. Uh, I know personally that you had a great conversation. So if someone would be willing to share it with the group. I can share our education vision here. Um, this was more of a kind of a looking at avenues of how to educate and where to educate. And one of our biggest things was making sure um, multiple avenues of publication are more of an all-inclusive, so we're including the whole community and city um, and making sure we look at, like I mentioned, those multiple avenues of publication to make sure people are getting the information in the ways that they typically receive it. So whether that's someone that's more um, technology savvy and is going to be on the internet and looking at our website or getting um, electronic notification or newsletters um, versus having like a paper copy newsletter in the mail or like a handout a flyer, um, that kind of a thing. We really looked at some of the education um, factors that were in the tracking guide we got through this program. So the ride and drive event was something we discussed, um, more of an in-person education visioning session, or excuse me, um, in-person education event. Um, and then we didn't talk about this, but it's something that uh, could also be done is more of a, like a booth or something like that, a stand at one of your, your city events, if that's something you have. Um, so we ended up coming with the city of Blake desires to educate our community on electric vehicles, utilizing different platforms to engage all areas of our community. Great. 
Thank you, Lexi, for sharing. And I would encourage everyone to look at group four as well. Group three just flew through their, their first vision and tackled the, the one that wasn't being um, worked on. And so uh, take a look at that one as well. But right now, I think I'll open it up. We have just a couple minutes left of this webinar. If there's any outstanding questions that people have, otherwise I will um, briefly touch on our, our next steps. But I, I do want to give people a moment. If you have questions or comments, um, either put it in the chat or speak them out loud. Hearing none, I will. Um, and if you're still typing, just keep going for it. I'll cover the next steps. Uh, and then if there are questions, we can get to that. But. Uh, we do have, um, as always, we will be sending out a follow-up email to this webinar with the recording and uh, the slides from today, including, including the slides from Marissa. Um, but we do have linked here. Uh, Pi has this really great um, process, like planning process EV toolkit. And as a part of that, there's a walkthrough of the visioning process that we went to over today. So I would highly encourage you to, even if you're not in Excel, you can utilize these resources that they've developed. And so uh, we do have a link to that. We also have a, um, a EV vision worksheet that we've developed that kind of walks through the different parts of, um, of what should be included in a vision and includes goals as well and then ask some guiding questions that as you're as you are working towards creating this vision you can use to help guide that process and our next webinar is on wednesday may 31st the end of the month at the same time 9 to 10 a.m our next webinar we will be going over for example this ev vision worksheet as well as a different resource briefly at the beginning of the um, of the of the time that we have together on the uh, 31st. But we are also having it be more of kind of that office hours feel where you can come discuss um, any topics that you would like with the GPI team, as well as post questions to whoever else is on the call. Um, so it will be. Uh, partially guided and partially discussion based and so we do really encourage you to to come to that and take advantage of that time and really use it as a time to get questions answered or get specific feedback uh, from your peers as well as our GPI team and we, we will be sending out more information about that as the date gets closer. So um, without further ado, thank you all for coming today. We really appreciate um, your participation and your dedication to achieving these EV Smart goals. And so um, I do encourage you to reach out to us if you have any questions or just to let us know what you're working on. We always are wanting to hear that. So um, thank you all for joining today. And Keep an eye out for that follow-up email from us.